Let's see if these bits work. These kibbles and bits. <laughs> oh. Looks like we're live. What do you think about that, Mr. Takei? Oh, my. <laughs> Who's that supposed to be? And we're live. Who's it supposed to be? <laughs> Unbelievable. It's George Takei. It's Who? Not so George Takei? <gasps> Sulu? From Sulu. From Star Trek. Oh, Sulu. You want to hear it again? Uh, oh, jo- my. <laughs> oh, it's a voice thing. Oh. Sulu. <laughs> You've never heard him say that? That's like his classic phrase. Oh, my. I haven't seen that show for a long not, time. Not in, not in the show. No, he never said it in the show, yeah. He didn't say anything in the show. Did Sulu ever say anything? Did he ever have any oh, lines? Warp Factor 9. <laughs> or except for, yes, Captain. He had, right. In the movies, he said stuff, but in the show, he actually didn't say anything. All right, let's get... Let's I, ran, get I ran into him in a bar in San Francisco one time. Oh, really? How'd that go? I think it made him nervous when I said, are you who I think you are? <laughs> did, you, did you grab him and start crying on his shoulder? I said, let's fight. <laughs> You start talking to him about that one episode that, cr- that really bummed you out. The karate episode, yeah. <laughs> the kar- uh, what happened in the karate episode? Yeah, I don't know actually. <laughs> was there an episode where he Chelsea? was? He was. He didn't he like actually? He, he I, I seem to remember there's a picture of him like. Yeah, you know, I kind of vaguely like remember. Like in a Bruce this. Lee kind of a pose. Uh, and, I, you know, and he was shirtless, right? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Might have had like I, a, I, a Captain Kirk style cut across his <laughs> chest. I vaguely remember this. All right, we got Keith Long here. He says, can I have a job? He could be an intern. What do you want to do? Free intern. <laughs> we can always use more free interns. <laughs> How are you editing? <laughs> How are you being the host of a podcast? <laughs> we also have got uh, Mark LaPointe. He says, howdy from Salt Lake. We've got Christopher Gavin. Hello there, Ryan Stryker. Hello. I, ho- I really hope that's your real name. Ryan Stryker. It's like a, um, a action novel character. we got Chase McClain. We've got Mark LaPointe, and we've got Don Lopez. What's up, Dom? we got Sammy. Hello, gents. Guys, we have an exciting show here. And uh, we uh, we were ready to go a half hour ago, but someone needed technical a technical break. Delays. Oh, it's a te- <laughs> technical biological de- delays. <laughs> oh, All right. So let's not, uh, let's not make the good people wait too long here because everyone's dying to know about. People want uh, the tweet. Oh, I should have guessed that you were going to ask me for that. Such a single-minded creature. You want the tweet? You got the tweet. Here it is, Lewis. Here is your tweet incoming. Look at that tweet. That's I'm thinking it. about running an all-you-can-tweet special. <laughs> <laughs> well, but this is the only tweet we have, so don't put too much pressure on me. That's the tweet. Enjoy it. Do with that tweet whatever you will. It's, that it's is yours. quite generic. You should just copy and paste that. You can use that every single week. You know what? That's actually not a bad idea. I'll change the link every week. It saved me uh, about <laughs> two minutes of work because you know how much effort it takes crafting all this original content. Lewis, it's not easy. All righty. <clears throat> we got Eric Peter Carlson here. I was waiting for someone with three names, and now that we have him, we can get this show going. Let me um, let me boot up Mrs. You-Know-Who, and uh, we can get this show rolling. Oh, Mrs. D, guess who's here? <laughs> Is that delicious little El Caney here? Oh, he is. And he uh, he told me last week that um, he thought you were looking quite lovely. Oh, stop it. I'd like to get my <laughs> oven mitts on his buns. Whoa. This is D, relax. Good grief. Family-friendly show. All right, let's go ahead and get everything booted up here. And, um, well, <laughs> oh, my goodness, my freaking Apple Watch. Did you guys hear that? Always oh, talking when... We start doing the show. It just starts ah, chiming in on stuff. No idea why. All right. Here we go, guys. Hello, and welcome to the whole cast, the best 30-plus minute alpha conversation you're going to hear all week long. I'm your host, Air Fun Elijah. Join me today. He's consulting with Johnny I's new Love From design firm to create new wood pillories in the Cultimac riding cage. I hear they're considering Brazilian rosewood for the uh, neck and wrist cuffs. Yes, sir, he's a stickler for design and discipline. He's managing editor of Cult Mac. Lewis Wallace is here. Yeah, the most important thing is the stainless steel lock. 
Also with us, his new book will be a departure from his normal Apple topics, this coffee table book titled Cult of Whack. It's going to showcase pictures of himself finishing off five to six Stellas, then hitting unsuspecting pub patrons with chairs. <laughs> this will no doubt be one of his finest works. He's the founder of Cult of Whack. Leander Caney is here. Hey, when he said Cult of Whack, I thought we were going to be talking about something else. So thank goodness it didn't say. Uh... Oh, jeez. Well, Speaking of whack, day. what's up with your video, man? You're like you're half of a screen or something. God, what a segue that is. Thank you. Go, you. go vertical? What the hell? <laughs> what's going on? Is it all gone wrong? No, no, no. It actually looks better than it did. So apologies, though. We're, 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 we seem to have, be having some internet problems with Leander's uh, video. We tried everything. We, we restarted <laughs> everything, and, and it's still like kind of weird. It's like bouncing around, and he's like, uh, 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 uh. he's moving like a pigeon, you know? like Blinking very... more than usual. <laughs> He looks like he's uh <laughs> like stop motion. We've got Leander stop motion blinking. Yeah, you are blinking a lot today. Are you right? Oh, okay. Stop it! Now you're making me self conscious. <laughs> and it's making me blink even more. I can't. You're yeah, not on the know, space station, up. are you? Huh? Not on the space station, are you? <laughs> no, it feels like it though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll uh, I'll take the the focus off you, so no one sees your rapid blinking. <laughs> Uh, it's distracting me, but it is funny. Okay, let's. Uh, blink is gone. Sorry, I'm like making that, uh, self conscious like about that commercial. Here. Blink twice if if you're <laughs> okay. <laughs> Help me. As a, as a gang of marauders broke into the Cult of Act World headquarters, are you trying to signal us for help? <laughs> <laughs> is there someone who's uh, threatening you just off camera? Oh my goodness. Okay. We got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. You want to know? All right, here you go. We've got more information on on, on Apple hardware. We're going to be talking about uh, how Apple may be scrapping the 13-inch MacBook Pro and what they're going to replace it with. We've got information on the new iPad, uh, a new iPhone SE. We have got some information on the new Mac Pro with faster M1 chip. It's just uh, there's just lots of leaks happening this week that we're going to talk about. And we may have an Apple event right around the corner, like in the next two to three months, I think, especially if um, this uh, new Eurasian filing that happened is any indication, because I feel like these always happen right before, like right before we get a product announcement, like usually around two to three months. So it looks like we might have another event on the way. And then also, it's a sad day for all of us Apple fans, because one of the best loopholes for getting a discount on your Apple hardware has this week been closed. I'm, of course, talking about the Apple education discount that you could have gotten, that you may have gotten in the past. Well, good luck getting that now because Apple took action to close that off. TC wants his profit margin, so no discount <laughs> for you. Before we dive into all the fun, and there is much fun to be had, let me give a thank you to Squarespace for supporting this episode. Squarespace has the website that you need to do anything and sell anything. You can build a website that focuses on content. You can build a blog. You can build a website that highlights your skill set. But I think one of the main reasons people love Squarespace sites is because if you're a business owner, you need to have a website that you can use to promote your business. Is this thing uh, totally whack? Oh, yeah. Let me adjust that. There we go. If you have a business, you need to be online and you need to be hustling to to highlight your business and Squarespace makes it really easy to have a business website up fast. You can really easily build a <clears throat> a uh, excuse me a an email list so that you can email people. You can create a a uh, subscription for uh, like a special um, part of your website so people can you know will pay to access parts of your website or book your talent if you have something that you can train people on. So there's just all of this great functionality built right in, and it's super easy to build. It's super easy to maintain, which I think is probably the most important part. You can do everything by yourself. You don't need to hire anyone, and it will look beautiful on any device that visits. If you are in need of a website, I always tell people, just head on over to squarespace.com forward slash cultcast, squarespace.com forward slash cultcast. Start the uh, free trial. It's two weeks. They don't ask for your credit card information. Build a website. See how you like it. And if you like what you have at the end of the two-week trial, you can use code Coltcast at checkout to save 10% off your first purchase. And if you do a year of service like I do, you get an additional discount and you also get a free domain name at squarespace.com forward slash Coltcast and use the offer code Coltcast at checkout 
so that they know we sent you and uh, it also gets you the discount. All righty. Who am I sending it to this week? I think it's Lewis. I can hardly believe it. Lewis, you want to tell us about <clears throat> the uh, the uh, 13-inch MacBook Pro going bye-bye? Yeah, it could be the end for the 13-inch MacBook Pro. It's it looks true. like maybe. Uh, latest rumor is that Apple scrapped the 13-inch MacBook Pro this year after introducing the 14-inch mo- or a new 14-inch model with a next-generation M2 chip. Uh, companies also said to be playing new entry-level iPad with a 10.2-inch display, the last iteration before a big design is rolled out in 2023. This also comes from the uh, increasingly popular Twitter tipster. I was just going to say. At Dylan DKT. He, I think like maybe two or three of the stories this week are based off his intel. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so he, the actual tweet that he, uh, we're talking about here, it says the currently available M1 MacBook Pro 13 will be replaced with a MacBook Pro 14 with an M2 chip. It will receive a slight price increase over the previous generation. Oh, oh that's shocker. a bummer. <clears throat> uh, right now, though, you can still get the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. It costs twelve ninety nine. So you know, currently the fourteen inch MacBook Pro costs nineteen ninety nine. So I guess what he's saying is somewhere in between those two prices. And it looks like it's going to have the same yeah. like uh, body design as the uh, <clears throat> the uh, M1 Pro, M1 Max. So yeah, just faster chip, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> slight price increase. Uh, yeah, and uh, let's see. Also, alongside that, the other thing is you know introduce a. Uh, redesigned MacBook Air, also with an M2 chip, which I was kind of surprised to hear that. I mean, like, maybe they should just keep the MacBook Air with the M1. Well, remember what we heard from German, that the <laughs> M2 is going to be marginally faster than the M1, right? So, because initially I was thinking, oh, man, look what they did with the M1. The M2 is just going to be an absolute powerhouse, and it's going to be as advanced of a leap as the M1 was over the Intel chips that <laughs> the, not like Apple. Yeah, it's not. It's not. I don't. I don't think that's actually what is going to pan out. It looks like the the M1 was the leap, and then the M2 is going to be the iteration, right? So it's going to be a skip ahead, not a not a giant leap ahead. But still, it will be faster, and will probably have more GPU cores. So it's still exciting. I'm sort of confused though about this whole thing. So the the 16 inch MacBook is going to remain. Yeah, so they they are going to be moving away from the 13 inch to the uh, why so why 14 would the 16 inch go away. Yeah, so yeah. basically they're getting rid of 13 inch entirely. So it'll be 14 and 16 inches, right? Yeah, that's all. Yeah, I mean, it, it exactly. makes total sense. Like, just I mean, it's they're basically the same size anyway, right? Uh, 13 and 14 is just a bigger screen, in a, isn't it? Yeah, I and think the they just re- yeah, that's that's my understanding, but. Uh, Anyway, so I mean that I think it, it's to me it's kind of odd they have 13 inch, 14 inch, and 16 inch MacBook Pro. So I think it makes total sense to consolidate to 14 and 16. Uh, maybe they keep the MacBook Air at a, uh, you know, well he says, <clears throat> I don't know, I, I don't actually know what he said about the MacBook Air. I think I, I I saw that at the end of all the prep work for this thing, right? But. Uh, it, I don't think he actually specified what size the MacBook Air would be. Maybe that'll be the thing. MacBook Air will be 13, MacBook Pro, who knows. Yeah, he just says it's going to be redesigned. But did you talk about the the iPad as well? Did, did you not make... get to that yet. Oh, okay. I just want to make it. sure because I feel like this is going to be my next iPad, honestly, because the I, I, have the, I have the iPad Pro and it's like, dude, it's just... Overkill. It's way overkill and I'm having this weird problem with it and I think I talked about this last <laughs> show is it just it does all these weird and and this may not be anything having to do with the iPad being more powerful or being a pro model but it it it's constantly doing stuff in the background so I will if I don't put on an airplane mode I will come back after using it the night before and it will be like 30% drained and I'll go look at the background activity for the apps and the home app is one in particular that it's just constantly doing something in the background and I and I have the uh, there's an option to turn off using the iPad as a home hub. I have that turned off. So there's nothing the home app should be doing. There's nothing, there's no background <laughs> activity that should be happening. And I had this problem before. So I wiped the entire iPad and reinstalled the OS. And now I'm having it again. And I'm like, is this like an iPad Pro problem? I don't know if it's just like, it's it's battery life is just a lot worse because it's more powerful. But, uh, but when I bought that thing, I, I knew it was way too 
OP for what I use it for. Like, I literally use it to watch Dr. Disrespect videos at night before I go to bed. And I don't need anything. I don't need anything else other than that. Other than that. So I think this this new iPad might be the one. And if they give it the, um, I don't care about 5G, but if they give it the, <laughs> the new FaceTime camera, the FaceTime camera improvements that they've put into the M1 MacBook Air are such a massive leap forward in 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 camera fidelity I think that feature alone might might make it worth upgrading. Honestly, Bluetooth five dot five point is supposed to have two. That'll help. A fourteen Bionic processor. I mean, honestly, the the entry level iPad is so good now. I mean, it, I think it's one of the most exciting things there is. You know, it, I I have the same thing. iPad Pro that I don't use for anything Pro because you know I, when I bought it, I had, I had this vision of like, oh, I'll I'll be recording music on my iPad. I'll be doing the, you know all this crazy. And it's like, yeah, right. I didn't end up doing it. Yeah. <laughs> That was me. I was like, pretty oh, lame. I got this new iPad Pro. I I bought the Apple Pencil, and I'm like, I'm gonna do all this cool stuff with it, right? I'm gonna be an artist now. <laughs> and that dang pencil, I spend all the only time I interact with it is just to check it, to check its charge level so it doesn't die. Oh, <laughs> and other than right. that, it just sits in a drawer. And that every is... once in a while, I go get it so I can sign a PDF and then put it back. And that's that is it. So pro. You There's know? so many guys on our team that use iPad Pro or, you know, for, for so many things. And it's, I always feel uh, like I'm missing out on something, you know, like uh, there's got to be some cool workflows. There's got to be some things that if I did it on the iPad, I would be so excited about it. But, you know, I'm just kind of tied into the MacBook. Me too. I, you know, it's weird. I, I just feel like working on an iPad, there's so many workarounds that you have to try to figure out. And the iPad, the iOS apps, iOS is just not a professional OS, in my opinion. So there's just a lot of things that you can't do with it. Ooh. And I mean, it's true, right? I, it's, it's, I kind of feel know. like it's... People like it. I, people like it, but I feel like, generally speaking, anyone arguing in good faith would admit that it's not really a pro OS. It <laughs> would, And there's so many things that you have to work around it and, and figure out for yourself. It's like, if you, if you were... I feel like the Mac is like, you want to... You want, a hamburger, you just go and, and you get a hamburger from a place, right? And it's just ready for you to go. You just eat it. And with the iPad, it's like, well, first I have to bake the bread and I have to figure out where I'm going to get the lettuce from. And <laughs> now I have to know like where the beef is going to come from and I'm going to put it into its own patty. There's just a lot more effort that goes into it to create a final product. So my, I, think just my just, I, I think it's just a matter of not using it on a day-to-day -day basis and not, not, you know, it's like, you know, it's basically learn a new operating system, right? I mean, the ins and outs of it. I mean, it's you or I pick it up, and you, there's tons of things you can do intuitively, quickly, and easily, right? But, you know, if you want to actually do some hardcore stuff, you got to spend just a little bit of time yeah, studying it, researching it, reading how-tos. I think there are things that you can do well. Like, we got Level Remix here. He's saying he uses his iPad Pro for DJing with my mini. That totally makes sense. Sammy says Apple Pencil plus the paper app, decent note-taking app. Yeah, and actually OneNote for, from Microsoft is is also a great app on, on iPad that has Apple Pencil support. I use that. So there are definitely reasons to I, – I know I'm just rehashing an old yeah. – uh, <laughs> An and, 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 and old complaint that I have about the iPad. I really, I really love my iPad. I just wouldn't choose it for productivity. All right, so there you the, go. The, uh, yeah, the last little bit of this, though, I didn't get to it. So supposedly this year is going to have the same 10.2-inch form factor. Uh, but next year, 2023, is the year it gets, you know, a big redesign. And this might be the one where it gets, you know, there's no details in the in the, this particular tweet or string of tweets that we're talking about. But it could finally be the end of the home button. might mean square edges, edge-to-edge screen, USB-C like iPad mini just got. So, that if, would be you cool. know. Yeah, maybe this year isn't the year to buy the iPad, but uh, who knows? All right, so there's your iPad news. There is your 13-inch MacBook Pro developments. It makes sense that they're going to transition away from that and just use the two designs that they already have because those are the new designs, and they probably want to unify their design language. Let's talk about Mac Pro. LK. You're, you, I, I consider you a professional, so this is probably the machine for you, right? <laughs> this is right up my alley, And yes. I know that uh, you actually, it's funny, Lander got the, the new iMac, the M1 iMac, but he has stopped using it because he keeps so many tabs open that he has ground the machine to a halt, and it literally <laughs> can no longer handle all the tabs that he has open. So he has to, you, you have to go back, you went back to use your old iMac, like your eight-year-old iMac, I which has more RAM, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made the mistake of not uh, maxing out the RAM on the um, the uh, the M1 iMac, the 24 inch one. Yeah. And um, yeah, it can't handle the tabs. You know, it just sort of grinds to a halt. And I need the tabs. I can't work without a million tabs <laughs> open. So, you know, I, I can't. It's not. It's sitting next to my machine right here. It's my secondary machine. I've got a bunch of analyt analytics running on it and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's not my main machine. Well, it's kind of a it's kind of a bummer because there's so many things that machine does really well. Like the camera is much better for sure. But it is funny to me that um, you have so many tabs open that an iMac can actually can't even handle it. So so maybe yeah. this, so maybe what you need is to spend whatever they charge for this new Mac Pro. And get it like with like sixty four gigs of RAM, just so you can live live the life that you've always wanted to live, where you have uh, yeah, hundred tabs open at one time, and your computer Tab doesn't even sweat. 3, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so tell us about Jeez. the new uh, Mac Pro here, LK. Okay, so the Mac Pro, yeah, this is supposed to be coming this year, and it's gonna and this along with the the twenty seven inch iMac um, will be uh, complete Apple's uh, transition to Apple Silicon, you know, this year twenty twenty two. So um, according to the rumors, Apple's going to introduce a new Mac Pro with an upgraded M1 chipset by the end of the year to complete its Apple Silicon uh, transition, according to a tipster. So previous rumors indicated the high-end desktop would stick with Intel chips. Whoa, boo, until uh, the next generation M2 Pro chipset became available. Um, so there were dueling rumors. I'd heard it both ways. But anyway, so however, a new rumor suggests that it will initially get an even more powerful M1 chip instead. So despite recent reports suggesting that we may have to wait for a new M2 chipset in 2020, 2023 before the Mac Pro gets its Apple Silicon upgrade, Twitter tipster, guess who it is? Dylan DKT. DT, how do you say it? D Dylan DKT. Yeah, I used to say D -T -A DTK, but it's DKT. DKT. Dylan yeah. DKT claims Apple is a slightly different solution. So, quote, this is quoting from his tweet, um, the Mac Pro's processor will not be an extension of the M2, said Dylan. Um, he, this is on Monday. The processor of the Mac Pro will instead be a further extension of the M1 beyond the cores of the M1 Max. So that's super clear. Um, it's not really clear exactly how many cores a new M ch M1 chip would pack, but you know it, it, he's suggesting that it's going to have more more cores than the current M1. So there's evidence to suggest that Apple could fuse two M1 Max chipsets together for a quote M1 Max Duo. This could result in a whopping 20 cores for processing, up to 64 for graphics, and up to 128 gigs of RAM. Now that's now you're talking. That's the kind of RAM I need. <laughs> so multiple references to multiple die chips already showed up in macOS code, and these clues suggest that Apple is actively working on such a setup. It seems like a brilliant way to bridge the gap between the M1 and the M2 generations. So yeah, this um, this is yeah we talked about this rumor before, hadn't we? A few weeks ago, you know, with yeah. the, the M1 Max Duo. That sounds very very exciting. They're going to Squish two M1 uh, chips together, um, and uh, it's um, you know it'll be like a real monster. 128 gigs of RAM. Wow, I've never had that much RAM ever. <laughs> I haven't either. I think the highest I've gone. How many gone tabs is... you could have open? Oh yeah, that'll be a lot of tabs. <laughs> that that might finally meet your standard. Tabs. Yeah, a thousand. They would each be the width of a human hair. So you'd have to be very delicately, you know, select the tab that you want to be on so that you can figure out how to open each one. But you can have as many open as you want. What happens when they all start playing music? You know, that's the worst problem. It's like you find out which tab is like gone playing some loud, you know, YouTube video. Does it matter? You have the processing power to have them all play music at the same time. So true. Yeah, true, true, know. true. So if you think about it from a from a production perspective, I think this actually makes a lot of sense. Right. So they release the M1. And I've always thought that they would not move from M M1 uh, uh, technology to M2 until the entire transition is complete. Well, that right? would make sense, wouldn't it? So why why are they why is there rumors that they're going to be moving some machines to M2 before the you know the the, the, the whole lineup's gone to M1? I don't know why people think that. I don't know if there were any, if there were any credible rumors that that was going to happen either, because that never really made sense to me. Why would Apple? You would have a marketing problem at that point. Why would people? buy a machine um well if you moved to m2 right yeah right no one's gonna buy an m1 machine right exactly generation, right so. so you need to have them all be on the same platform before you start upgrading other machines otherwise it seems like it would create a marketing problem for them so it seems like this is a, this is kind of the the track that they're on the m1 right way more powerful not a pro chip m1 pro m1 max 
Pro chips. Well, then how do you one-up that? Well, you just put two of those chips on the same board, and now you have, like, mega powerful machine. And you're not in jeopardy of um, obsoleting those Pro machines with M2 when it comes along, since it's going to be faster. Because it probably will be faster maybe in single core performance. And so if you release a MacBook Air with an M2 and it's and it's marginally faster than your iMac, that's 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 a marketing problem right now. People don't really know which machine to buy. So this makes a lot of sense. They'll release something that is just insanely powerful and then they'll start trickling out M2, which will probably be moderately faster in some specific um, in some specific tests like single core like Geekbench tests, but other than that it won't match the sheer horsepower that you'll have in like an M1 Max Duo done, or something. When was the last? Are they still selling multi-core machines? Like um, some of the old, um, the older Mac Pros had a couple of Xeon chips in them, right? Yeah, I don't even know. I don't, I don't even they, know if those are still for sale. They probably. I wonder. We should check. They probably, probably are not. It's been a little while. Yeah, it's been a while. So, so, um, let's see here. Well, actually. Come to think of it, they must be because they haven't moved the um, the Mac Pro over to Intel or to um, to Apple Silicon yet. So yeah, it's 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 got to still be available. And that was actually twenty eight core. Yeah, that was one of that was one of the uh, the funny stories that came out of the last year was um, there was this uh, this YouTube reviewer who I've talked about on the show here, Max Tech. His channel is really great. If you guys haven't checked him out, and he bought this fifteen thousand dollar Mac Pro when it first came out. And then the Apple Silicon started rolling out to other Apple machines, and the Mac, the MacBook Pro specifically, was destroying that machine in like a majority of the benchmarks and real life applications that you would find yourself in, except for mi- very specific scenarios. And so he was trying to sell this Mac Pro, <laughs> and he, he he couldn't buy it. He could he couldn't sell it because everyone was like, oh, "I'll just go with the MacBook Pro." And so he has this fifteen thousand dollar machine that basically became obsolete. You know, 18 months after he bought it, and it's just like a $15,000 paperweight now. Maybe he could sell it to like NASA or something to do fluid dynamics uh, calculations or something. I don't know, because <laughs> no mere mortal, I don't feel like actually needs that machine anymore because the M1 and M1 Pro and Max chips are so freaking powerful now. I'm kind of waiting for the iMac, the next generation iMac, the 27 inch. Yeah, I, w- I just, I just, so I want a new MacBook Pro. And I almost bought one recently, but now I'm thinking to myself, I really just want to see what they do. Because I have a feeling, after all like the intel that we've heard, that it might be something special. It might even have an M1 Max Duo in the iMac. So I'm curious to see what they do with that. And before I drop my money into a MacBook Pro, I think the iMac might be on the way in the next several months. So I kind of want to wait and see what they do and see if that machine is going to be a, is going to be a lot more powerful and probably less expensive than a MacBook Pro. I just can't get myself to plurk down the cash and spend the money on the MacBook Pro and I know that machine, especially if it's large, if it has a larger screen. Hopefully it's going to be 32 inches and not 27 inches cuz we've kind of heard both. But that's the one that I think I want, but we just don't really have very much information about it. Uh, as of there haven't been that many rumors about it, have there? So, yeah, I mean, and and all the intel that we've had has kind of been similar. It's like, oh, we think it's on the way. It's gonna, it's gonna potentially have a larger screen, and it, and then that's kind of all we've heard. But I do think they will eventually release something in the iMac realm that will be more powerful than what we presently have, because there have been really powerful, almost and literally pro level iMacs, right? And the one that we have now is. It's a MacBook Air with a bigger screen, essentially. That's all it is. So I would like to see a pro pro level version of the iMac, and it doesn't seem it seems strange to me that there is no option for pros in iMac, and your next choice would have to be a really expensive MacBook Pro, or you'd have to spend money for a Mac Pro. That doesn't that doesn't seem to be there's not a category for people who want faster performance, but don't want to buy like a super high level pro machine so i'll be curious to see um what they do let's see here level remix says i hope they work with lg and just make imac 32 inch oled dude that would be if they put oled in there i don't think they will but i would i would definitely love to see that sammy's saying 27 inches is just the perfect screen size i have to disagree with sammy on that one i think 32 is perfect (laughs) 
See, I have a 34 in front of me right now, and I feel like this is just slightly too small. Um, so I'm always like, the bigger the better, especially when you're editing, because you could you could stretch your timeline all the way out. And 27 inches, I just feel, is not enough space to to see everything that you would need to see on a um, on on an edit. But that's just my use case. You know, no, not everyone's using it for uh, for editing videos. Okay, let's move on. Oh wait, before we do that, Lewis, do you want to do a quick blurb on the giveaway? This is yeah, some good dude, stuff, Lewis. We got to let them know what's going on. The giveaway. This is a real, real different one this week too. Uh, this week we're giving away uh, three of these. It's the Invoxia Cellular GPS Tracker. Have you heard of this thing? I saw a blurb on this actually on Cult of Mac. Tell us all about it, Lewis. Yeah, so, uh, you know, this is basically like an air tag on steroids, right? It, it doesn't rely on Apple's Find My Network. It has its own uh, 4G chip in it. So, it, you know, wherever there's cellular network, it, it can be found, right? Uh, and it's, it's uh, I don't know, it looks like it's about the size of a cigar, something like that. It's made of, uh, I believe, aluminum metal. Uh, and... You just toss it in your uh, car, you toss it in the back end of your motorcycle, you toss it in your laptop bag, whatever like that, and uh, then you can always find it when somebody inevitably steals it, which, you know, I hate to say that's always going to happen in a city like San Francisco, other cities like that, but uh, we just somebody just the other day, a couple blocks away, got their car stolen, turned up, you know, they found it a few days later down behind the Lowe's, as you do. Yeah, right. <laughs> so my daughter's car was found. God, it's a great Down place behind. to dump a, a dump a stolen car. Uh, anyway, so if you go to the homepage, Cult of Mac, uh, you scroll down to the giveaway area, you'll see you can enter. It's free to enter. Three lucky winners get the Invoxia cellular GPS tracker, plus you get uh, the one-year subscription to the 4G network, so let it work. Um, that's this week's giveaway. Dude, this actually is pretty cool. I mean, this so, – so this is better – then the air tags, not in always, but in that it uses GPS, so it doesn't rely on other Apple devices being close by, right? So that's actually better because yeah, it's, its own thing. It's its and, own and thing. It's a cellular right? network, and yeah. it's a cellular network, right? And then also that uh, if someone is stealing your stuff, it's not going to warn their iPhone that an air tag is traveling right. with them, right. which kind of defeats the purpose. Of of an air tag if you're trying to prevent theft because then they'll just find it and throw it into a river. I wonder if there's been a bunch of um, you know, car thieves who've switched from Android to iPhone just so they can uh... <laughs> know if something's <laughs> tracking them. Yeah, that is a weird feature, <laughs> and it just goes to show that the air tag was designed to help you find your missing stuff and not to prevent theft. So this is the use case for this is is clearly to help you find things that have been misplaced or stolen. And yeah, this is uh, like a low, low jack, isn't it? Yeah. But, you know, yeah. Right. That's, you, that's, what, that's what we should call it in our little giveaway post. It's like a low jack. Yeah, that's what it is. And it's, uh, I think they retail for $129, and, and, you know, you do have to pay an annual subscription for the, uh, the, for the tracking, the tracking stuff. stuff. But you know? it's really but, cheap. Uh, I was just looking you, through you this. You get that with the giveaway. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's $30 a year. For the for the service, I mean that's like right. like that that that's that's palatable. It's not five bucks a month. It's not ten bucks a month. It's less than three dollars a month. You know, it's just a hair over um, two bucks a month. Or yeah, uh, I mean this yeah. thing looks cool. I mean the only thing I would say is it's it's bigger than an air tag. You know, so it's more. Uh, I mean, there's fewer. You can't just like bolt it onto the back of your bike, right? It's not as inconspicuous. But but uh, if someone you saw this, put it inside the bike. You put it in the frame. Oh, totally. Easily. Yeah. Drop this put thing it under in your the in the frame. Drop it uh, yeah. under your seat. How would you do that? Well, the hollow uh, mostly. Open so, tube. You know, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the other thing is, is like if someone saw this, they would never think that this was a tracker. It looks like a USB stick with a cap on it. I wonder. You know? I, I wonder if car thieves are up on this stuff. Do they stay up? They like, oh, you know, first thing you do, check the glove compartment, see if one of those things in it. You know, my experience with car thieves is they're not the <laughs> brightest people. <laughs> not that organized. <laughs> I like know, usually man. it's some punk kid who who went on YouTube and figured out how to steal your Honda Accord and uh, <laughs> half the time they can't even figure it out and I can speak about this from experience because I actually had I used to have this old Honda Accord which which are one of the most stolen cars in America and one time they actually did steal it and then the next time they couldn't figure out they're too stupid to start it 
So they broke my lock still, and they were trying to figure out how to how to steal the car, and they never could do it. So they just left with the, the car there with with the lock broken. Great. So yeah, I don't, I don't. They're not exactly Einstein's stealing cars. Now some of them are. There are people who who do this for a living for sure. They're like organized crime. They're probably much more able to, you know figure out if they're being tracked or not but anyway i wonder if you can scan like if they have scanners you like you know, boop, 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 it tells you oh there's a, a tracker in this car they might yeah i don't know I, that's that, a really that's high end that sounds pretty sophisticated Lambos. yeah <laughs> that sounds like uh like some uh hans gruber level stuff right there not, i don't know not 2005 <laughs> yeah, Honda Accord. yeah yeah I think normally they just look to see uh, does this car does this car have a club on it and that's the extent of like uh, their check right? it's like nope let's take it you need one of these things that you can attach to your uh, uh, catalytic converter. I mean, that's what everybody's stealing in San Francisco these days. That's crazy. Um, saw off the catalytic converter. That is so weird. My, my friend like a owns a uh, grocery store, and they have a delivery truck, and someone stole his catalytic converter. Yeah, and, that's uh, the he, big thing. He was just telling me, and I was like, what is someone going to do with your catalytic converter? Why does someone want that? It's got platinum in it. It does? Yeah. It's got, it's got some, uh, you know, so like high level rare metals in it. And it, and they must have them in enough quantities that I guess that's why they want delivery trucks that they're worth stealing. I, I mean, this has been a problem in San Francisco for years now. It happened to a guy on my darts team. You know, one night some Yahoo was out there with saws all underneath his uh, Honda Element, sawing the thing off. <laughs> got <laughs> away he, with it. And he got, oh, he didn't catch him? No, somebody saw the guy. He was uh, you know, yelling at him, waving his saws all around. I'm locked yeah, out of my the- car. <laughs> I'm just trying yeah. to get back into my car yeah. Yeah. by sawing through the whole the <laughs> floor. Say, there's been a, a wave of this across the country. I mean, you know, it's uh, for some reason there's uh, apparently there's enough uh, precious metal in there to make it uh, worth stealing and, and extracting. I had no idea. So, so he spends a fortune fixing this catalytic converter issue, right? And then I think a couple months later, some Yahoo drills a hole into his gas tank to steal his gas. So instead of using what? A, instead of using a siphon, which I guess the guy was not smart enough or prepared enough to wow. do, it's this big commercial truck. He drills a hole into the gas tank and drains the gas out that way. And so they go to start it. They, they can't start it, right? It won't start. And uh, they eventually figure out what the heck's going on with it. And uh, they, they take it to get it fixed. And the shop's like, this is going to cost you eight grand to fix. We have to like completely de- deconstruct your truck to get this gas tank out. Oh my God. So that's that's really, even worse. The best part is, <laughs> the best part is, so you got to love the city of Seattle. The city of Seattle has been hounding him. They're like, you, they're like, we're going to find you. You got to clean up all this gas. He's like, dude, somebody drilled a hole in my gas tank. I'm trying to figure out like how to get this thing out of here. We have to get it towed. It's a big commercial truck. And he's getting hounded by the city to get his truck moved or they're going to find him because there's, there's gas leaking all over the place. <laughs> He's like, Jeez. I'm trying to get this thing fixed. I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. We've never had this problem before. And meanwhile, he's getting well, hounded. How could his gas continue? I mean, it it must have all leaked out at once I, and disappeared. I, I mean, how could they? I don't know. Maybe I, maybe it's still dripping or something because of where he put the hole. I have no idea. He, but apparently, he just keeps put, putting more gas in it. <laughs> just <Yeah. dripping> out. <laughs> maybe he put some duct tape on the hole and he's like, I gotta drive this thing to the shop. They want a thousand dollars to tow it. I gotta get this thing out of here. It's just like pouring maybe, gas out. I don't know if it's just drill. He just put some epoxy on the outside, cutting in, and seal the hole up. I mean, that seems... Or wine cork. Let's... Jam it in there. <laughs> oh, wine cork. Yeah. We got all kinds of help for this guy. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll suggest that. Thing. Actually, a wine cork w- might might work great. I, I will suggest that. But you got to be careful. You don't want to run into a Die Hard 2 scenario where uh, your plane <laughs> is leaking gas, and you go to take off, and then John McClane lights the uh, the gas on fire, and it, it, it like, shoots through the... Uh, <laughs> The sky and up to your wing and the whole, yeah. the whole truck explodes. You gotta be careful about that, you know. All righty, let's see here. We're sufficiently off track. Let's wrap up with um <laughs> with these a uh, couple quick stories here. So, the Eurasian Commission is a organization that uh, that Apple has to file new products with. And let's see here. Which does it say what countries they they cover? It's like Armenia okay. and. Uh, you know, some Easter blog. God, know. this is always a source <laughs> of leaks. And Apple just filed two new products with the Eurasian Economic Commission. And 
whenever they do this, we, it generally means that we're two to three months away from a product announcement. Now, I think in 2020, we had a event, or was it 2021? We had an event in March, I believe, where Apple announced a new iPad. So I think that we might be on track for a new March or even April event where if Apple had filed a new phone in the Eurasian Commission with the Eurasian Commission, I think that means we're going to get a new iPad Air, so the iPad Air 5. And then we also might get the iPhone SE. Now, the iPhone SE, I'm a little curious about because we had um, Ross Young, who is the, um, he works for DisplayMate, right? I think he was estimating that we might see the iPhone SE in 2023 or 2024. That seems kind of far out to me, but he has been pretty accurate to say the least in his in his predictions thus far. Although I don't know if him talking about potential release dates is actually an official prediction. He might have just been guessing, but he has a I think a 100% accuracy record with Apple Track. So he's pretty accurate. So but if Apple has filed these new products with the uh, Eurasian Commission I think that we're in for a March event where we see an iPad, so the iPad Air 4, and then possibly an iPhone SE. And it could just be that. I mean, these March events tend to be small and not very uh, packed full of hardware. So we might just get these two items and then that would be it. But we could get even more stuff than that, which would be cool because it's going to be a long, long winter until we get to new Apple products again. I mean, we're looking at, we're looking at potential apple announcements in june at wwdc that might be the next event that we get so it'd be cool if we could see some more products in the next few months and if you're looking forward to a cheaper iphone SE, well, they, yeah they seem to have a, a pretty you know full raft of products that's supposed to be coming out this year i mean we just talked about a whole bunch didn't we yeah. so yeah um you know there's gonna be they're gonna be released sometime yeah, and <laughs> and it would make sense to release these two products together, the iPhone SE 3 and the iPad Air 5, because these aren't super exciting products. Like, I even hesitate to talk about them because most people just don't care. But oh my. they got to get them out sometime, and they don't want I, they wouldn't want to release these at the same time they release like a new iMac or, or uh, you know, Mac Pro or something. But it would be cool if they also announced a new iMac at this event or at a March yeah. event. Like that, I think that's a possibility, honestly since the iMac is already out and this would be like something in addition to what they already have. But if the, if this event is educational in nature, which it has been in the past, it's like, Oh, here, here's a new iPad aimed at, aimed at um, education institutions. Then they would probably not release an iMac pro at something like that. But anything, anyway, something to keep your eye on, especially if you're thinking about getting a new iPhone or a new iPad air. And we'll wrap up with this story, which, which, is the end of an era. It truly is. <laughs> the Apple Education Store now requires validation that you are actually a teacher or a student. <laughs> this was one of the right, best. Just... What's that? <laughs> Rather than yeah. you just get the discount and saying, <laughs> I swear, yeah, I'm yeah. in college. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with this education discount, this was one of the few ways that you could get a discount on Apple hardware. And the discount wasn't insignificant. It was, you know, oftentimes 10% of the purchase price of a MacBook Pro or sometimes an iPad too, but I don't think the discount was that high for iPads. And all you had to do is go to the Apple Education site and just tell them what school that you went to. And you could literally tell them anything. And they would say, oh, okay, great. And then they would just lower all the prices and all the products. And you could buy any product that you wanted as often as you wanted. And now you have to verify your identify with Unidays, which I guess is some organization or some company that verifies people's uh, participation in educational inst institutions. And so there's one barrier to getting discounts on your Apple stuff. But in addition to that, they also <laughs> changed how many products that you could get. So before you could just buy as much as you wanted, I believe. And now you can only you can only buy one device on an education discount for the whole year. Not one Mac, one iPhone, one iPad, only one device. You gotta choose, what do you want your discount on? Uh, uh, and that's the only discount you get for the whole year. I, I heard it was uh, one device per product family. You did? That's what I heard. Mm, that's not what I heard, Lewis. Uh, I'm just telling mm, you. I don't know. Well, then maybe <laughs> we should, um, 
Look it up. Well, I did <laughs> look it up. Try buying one, see what happens. I, I did look it up, and I thought it was just one device. Period. So I'll have to look. I'll have to, I'll have to check that out. But that was the um, that was the information that uh, I thought was accurate. Let's see here. Does it say in here? No, it doesn't say on this page, unfortunately. But you know, in any case, you gotta be you gotta be actually a college student now. And this also means that when Apple does their back to school special. You're not going to get your free headphones, right? Because before you would also get free headphones and or or a free item, a free gift card or something, and your discount. And now you don't get any of that. So I should have had taps on file so we could play some taps because yeah. this has been this has been something that you could take advantage of for for a long, long time. I mean, ever since we've been doing this show, and maybe even beyond. So yeah, it's been years and years. I wonder why they changed it now then, because like you said, it was like a huge you know, massive loophole that anyone could walk through. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I remember taking advantage of it a few years ago um, to get a laptop when, um, you know, my kids were in school and uh, my wife was a volunteer teacher and she, that qualified her for the discount. Uh -huh. But that was a good, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know. You know, I want to say 10 years ago, it might have been. Yeah, this has been around forever. I mean, ever since I was in college and, uh, I've used this a few times. I've used this a few times. And, and there were a couple times after college I used it. Just from, a, from a, <laughs> being honest, I was like, well, because I, I went to the site and it was like, because I went to Western Washington University and it was like, oh, you went to Western Washington University. Here's your discount. And I was like, oh, it doesn't even ask me to do anything. And then I realized later, like, oh, you could literally just say you went to Harvard and, 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 uh, get any discount you want. So, but, um, so, so no longer. So there are no, there are no good discounts anymore. Apple is really <laughs> clamping down on discounts. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, like this has been an ongoing thing. Cause before you could buy iTunes disc gift cards at, with discounts, right. And then use that to, to purchase thing, th things on the app store. You could use it to buy your iCloud storage or your Apple one subscription, and then Apple did away with their iTunes gift card program, and now they just have an Apple gift card, which you can use for hardware and for software, whereas before the iTunes gift card could only be used for software. It couldn't be used for hardware because they were constantly discounting it. And, uh, and now you have the Apple gift card. Guess what they never do? They never have sales on the gift card. They're always just full price. But they do offer promotions. If you buy an Apple gift card from Best Buy, Best Buy might give you like a $10 Best Buy gift card. They do this at Target. They do this at Amazon. Although, about six weeks ago, did I tell you guys this? About six Don't weeks know. ago, I, <laughs> how would you know? Because I guess I haven't actually told you what I'm about to tell you. About six weeks ago, I found this deal randomly that said that Walmart was selling Apple gift cards, like the ones that could be used on hardware and software, for, I think it was like almost 30% off. It might have wow. been more than thirty percent off, and I was like, "This, this, this has got to be a price glitch, right? Like this, this can't be real." So I went to Walmart, and sure enough, they were selling two hundred dollar gift cards. I think for a hundred and forty two dollars. What's a big discount, right? And so I bought one, and I was expecting them to say, "Oh, we we can't process your order," and and then cancel it. But then they they ended up sending me the cards. So I was like, "Oh shoot, <laughs> this actually works." So then I bought wow. I bought more. <laughs> and they sent me more, and uh, and then I was, and, and then and then they sent me those cards, and I was like, oh my goodness, I have to buy enough to save on my next Mac purchase. And I tried to buy more, and the deal was expired. So I don't know if it was a price glitch or what it was, but I got eight hundred dollars worth of Apple gift cards for. <laughs> God, I don't even know how much I paid. It was probably like low six hundred dollars, or or maybe even less than that, but. So did what you, did you do with them? Did, did uh, you I'm use gonna, them? No, I haven't used them yet. I haven't used them. But <laughs> they came from Walmart. So and it was yeah, sold by sure. Walmart, fulfilled by Walmart, right? It wasn't like a second party seller or a third party <laughs> seller or something. So I haven't used them yet. I'm gonna use them on my um uh, my next Mac purchase. I've been saving them. But you can find deals every once in a while, but that that is hands down the the best gift card deal I have ever seen. <laughs> and it only lasted like three hours and it started at like eleven thirty PM. I was on my iPad Pro doing pro things. <laughs> And I saw this deal pop up, and I was like, whoa, I can't believe it, that, that they're having a sale on these. And then sure enough, they were. And I have never seen a deal like that since or before that. That's the best Apple gift card deal I've ever seen. All right. I think that's all our stories. And look at poor LK. <laughs> he looks tired. I am fading. Do you need to go eat your lunch? 
My eyes are starting to blink again. <laughs> the Morse code has begun again. <laughs> yeah, your eyes uh, are blinking Morse code for help me. So hungry. So for me. So for me, Pokeball. Okay. Hey, what happened to the music? Oh, wait. Here's the volume slide oh, on this. <laughs> All right, guys. We're completely out of steam. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. That's all the cool cast we have for you guys this week. I know how you're feeling. You're like, no, don't. We want the fun to continue. Well, it can't. We're all on Twitter. I'm at Airfun, E-R-F-O-N. Lewis is at Lewis Wallace. Leander is at L. Kane. This has been the cool cast. The best 30 plus in app conversation. You're going to hear all week long. New episodes of the cool cast come out every Thursday night. I want to thank everyone for listening, and we'll see you guys. next time. I really wanted to give that one some gusto. I feel like I'm... Oh! Worth the Monster wow. Excuse me. I feel like I've just been... I've been limping to the finish, and I really wanted to put some stank on that one. You know what I'm saying, Tanner? Some real stank some on that on one. Stink. On that next time, you know? And I think I pulled I've, it off. I think it's stink, yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> you think it was stinky? It's only <laughs> mid, mid, medium stink. <laughs> Alright, everyone. Have a good weekend. I'm going to hover my cursor to the end stream button right now because we've got nothing else. That's it. <laughs>